Well, the headline that's come out this week is that Voyager 1, the furthest man-made object out there in the solar system, is actually on the verge of leaving the solar system itself, becoming the, the first probe we've ever sent out to enter into the space between the stars. So it's about to become a deep sky object. It is. It's about to, if you had a big enough telescope, it would be a deep sky object, yeah. So back in the 1970s, uh, scientists realized that because of a very fortunate alignment of planets in the solar system at that time, they could send out space probes that would be able to reach the edge of the solar system, not by having enormous propulsion rockets, but by using the gravity of the planets themselves to slingshot from one to another. The spacecraft were in position to visit all four of the outer planets, a grand slam. And there was only a three-year window when this, um, this alignment could be used. And in that three-year window, two probes were launched, twin probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which had the mission of exploring for the first time the planets in the outer solar system. Strangely enough, Voyager 2 actually launched first a few weeks before Voyager 1. Voyager 1 went on to visit Jupiter and Saturn. Voyager 2 went to Jupiter, Saturn, and then on to the outer planets Uranus and Neptune. Now with Voyager 1, which is the spacecraft that we're talking about today, after its encounter with Saturn, it was instructed to make a very close flyby of Saturn's moon Titan, which is probably one of the most exciting objects in the solar system because it has an atmosphere, which is very unusual for a moon, and, and for all we know may actually harbor the, the building blocks of life. Um, so it made this very close flyby of Titan, but as a result, the gravity of Titan slingshotted it out of the ecliptic, which is the plane of the solar system in which all of the planets orbit around the sun. So it headed off in, a, in an awkward direction out into interstellar space. And it's taken that many years until 2012 to actually reach now what we think of as the boundary of our own solar system. Well, we, we actually have had these headlines before that, that Voyager is reaching the uh, edge of the solar system. And what that is telling us is that that edge is really fuzzy. That boundary is not a firm boundary where one minute you're within the solar system and the next minute you're out in interstellar space. Voyager has, is traversing um, a, a very fuzzy boundary to get out of the solar system. So for the past few years, since about 2009, Voyagers have been in a region called the heliosheath. Now, the heliosphere is essentially the sphere of influence of the sun itself. The sun is emitting lots of very energetic, quickly moving charged particles in what is called the solar wind. At some point, the pressure of those outward particles hits up against the pressure of the interstellar gas, the hydrogen and helium that exists between the stars. And so there's some boundary at which this pressure is equal. And in between that, sort of in a doldrums region, is where the Voyagers have been for the past few years. The headline this week is that we think Voyager 1 is on the verge of leaving the heliosheath and officially being out in interstellar space. Traveling uninterrupted through interstellar space, the Voyagers will endure forever. So there are three pieces of evidence that the Voyager scientists are looking for to say, yes, Voyager has left the solar system and is out in interstellar space. What we're hearing about right now is that there's been an increase in charged particles being detected from um, galactic sources, so from outside the solar system being impacting, impacting on the Voyager instruments in the direction that they're traveling. And so there's been a slow increase over the past few months, but in the last month, it's, the rate of those particles has increased by 9% just in a month. The other two pieces of evidence that they're looking for is having a decrease of the number of particles coming from the solar wind, so coming from behind, and then also looking for the change in the magnetic field lines. So once you exit the sphere of influence of the sun, scientists expect that the magnetic field lines will change from being in an east-west direction to being in a north-south direction. And the instruments on Voyager should be able to detect that. So again, it's not going to be a sudden, right, we've left the solar system um, event. This is something that's going to happen possibly over the next few months, the next um, year, where Voyager is, is feeling less of an influence from the sun and more of an influence from 
whatever else is out there. Part of the effect of this headwind is being produced by the fact that the solar system itself is moving through the space in our galaxy. And so just as if you stick your hand out of a window when your car is in motion and you feel, you feel a wind pressing on your hand, so the solar system is moving through this, this gas in between the stars and is feeling a pressure build up. Uh, because of its motion through the interstellar medium. Now the voyagers themselves are moving ahead of the solar system, so not exactly in the direction that the, the solar system is moving, but in that, in that general area. They're encountering um, sort of a bow shock of the interstellar medium. Its, its lifetime has certainly extended far, far beyond what was initially, initially um, proposed for this mission. It's just been, you know, the little spacecraft that could. I mean, think about it, it was launched in 1977. So we in the UK have just this month celebrated the Queen's 60th anniversary on the, on the throne, the Silver Jubilee. 1977 was the Queen's Silver Jubilee, the 25th anniversary of her being on the, on the throne. When Voyager was launched, Jimmy Carter was president of the US. It was the year that Elvis Presley died. It was the year that Star Wars first came out in the cinema. I mean, this is, this is incredible that, that we've managed to build a machine with technology used in the 70s that's, that's still giving us useful information right now. It will keep going and going and going, traveling through interstellar space. It's not scheduled to encounter another star because of the direction that it's traveling in for another 40,000 years. So until that time, it's just going to make a long and lonely journey through the, the dark vastness of interstellar space. But if anyone ever does stumble upon it, both voyagers carry a very famous golden record um, that was partly inspired by um, the great scientist Carl Sagan, which has sounds and photo and images of Earth um, and instructions on, on how to find out where Voyager came from originally. The idea of that human-made object just wandering between the stars, do you find that kind of sad or really kind of romantic and amazing? I don't think it's sad, I think it's exciting um, and, and it's, it's nice to know that we have left some sort of lasting legacy, even of a very small kind. Um, it, it's our first step to travelling through the galaxy and, and who doesn't get excited about that? <laughs>